now, this is the turning point in the story. This is one of the huge turning points in the story. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was an Ophrah. Do not confuse with Oprah. <laughs> we love Oprah, but this is not Oprah. This is Ophrah which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianite. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our father told us about saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? Let's pause right there. What's fascinating, we're going to read a little bit more of this moment, but it's fascinating. So this angel shows up and sits under this tree, and Gideon is hiding because he's trying to make a decent meal. There's no meat involved. He's threshing wheat. But again, take my wheat, but don't take my meat. That's my motto. <laughs> but Gideon is trying to make a meal, and in that moment, he's hiding. He's scared. He's been hungry for seven years. It's not a good, not a good moment. And this angel shows up. And what I love is this interaction, this moment, this interaction between Gideon and this angel. And you can tell Gideon is full of hopelessness. He has zero faith. He is in the, he's, not, he's not thriving. He, he's trying to survive. And I love how this angel just interacts, and this angel calls him a mighty man of valor. Remember, he's hiding, he's scared to death, and Angel called him a mighty man of valor. One thing I've noticed is that God does not negotiate with hopelessness. He will not negotiate your hopelessness. Why? Because hopelessness always develops plans that are inferior to his. Hopelessness develops plans that are inferior to his plans. So he will always call you above your situation no matter what. So he doesn't negotiate. He's not like, oh, you know what, guys? I forgot. Gideon is starving for seven years. This isn't the guy. There's no, uh, Gideon, sorry, wrong, wrong number. I didn't mean to talk to you. I meant to talk to this guy over here. He doesn't negotiate. He's like, you are a mighty man of valor. Dude, you are so strong. And Gideon replied just a couple verses later. If you turn the page, at least in my Bible, go to verse 14. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianite. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, Oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest of Manasseh, and I am the least of my father's house. Pause right there. Gideon would actually part, scholars tell us, he was part of a noble, respectable family. And in Gideon's mind, he was part of the least of the least in his tribe. Truth is, he was part of a noble family, but inside his head, he was the least. Isn't that interesting? Now, we've always read that, like, yeah, his tribe just the work. I mean, they're the losers. They're like, they, they're just the reject. No, no, he's a noble, respectable family. I love this story because I love this moment here. It's, have you ever, do you remember in junior high where, you know, insecurities are just all over the place? You're like trying to figure out if, you know, you're just going through all, you're going through a lot of changes physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You're just trying to figure yourself out. And you're on that playground and there's a basketball game about to be played. And so, of course, the two best guys are going to be the captains. And then they pick teams. Now, whenever you're the captain and you're about to pick a team, you always pick the best player. You're like, that guy looks like he can jump, he can shoot, and he's five, you know, he's six inches taller than everyone else on the court. I pick you. God doesn't even pick anybody that wants to play the game. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not like the worst player on the court. He's like, none of you are gonna work. <laughs> so I pick, hey, you over there. You sitting on the bench. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. Have you played before? No. Okay, I want you to be my leader of this team. Wow. Isn't that the craziest thing? God picks someone that doesn't know how to play, does not want to play. He picks him. That's not how you win wars. You don't pick the worst player, let alone the one that doesn't know how to play. 
And so God showed to Gideon, to Gideon, you mighty man of valor. What are you talking about, God? Where have you been? I love this because Gideon is free to ask questions. Some of you need to sit alone with God and ask some real questions that you've been afraid to ask. We're, we're so concerned about acting like a Christian that we don't know how to actually be one. Well, I can't ask that question. That might send the wrong message. Listen, God is the only one that can handle all your, all your questions that you have. I've counseled people. They come to me and they're like, I'm so mad at God. It's like they whisper, I'm so mad at God. I said, have you told them? No, I haven't told them. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is not a joke. I have, this has happened so many times. I said, you know what you need to do? You need to go somewhere and just let it out. What are you talking about? He might know. Listen, he's the only one that can hear it. He's the only one that can handle your anger and your rage. No one else can. Even the best counselors in the world are eventually going to try to get you. Hey, listen, snap out of it. You need to go to God and let it out. Now, I'm sure there's a line somewhere where you can't cross the line. I'm sure. But hear my heart. You got to ask God the question that you're afraid to ask him. God, where were you? Where were you? Ask him those questions. God, I am so mad at you that that person died, that this situation happened, that that situation happened. I am ticked off. This is what Gideon's doing right here. It's like, where were you? Where were you? I've heard stories about you, but I ain't seen nothing. Talk to God like you mean it. And then say, God, I need you to show up. And I'm telling you, he will show up. He will say, I was right there. If I wasn't right there, you wouldn't be here. Give him an opportunity to interact with you on your worst moment and the worst, hardest questions you face. So Gideon, I don't know if he just felt free or he didn't know if it was God himself or an angel. Story tells us he didn't realize it was an angel until later. He thought it was some dude that stopped by. <laughs> so maybe that's good that he didn't know it was an angel. Oh, it's an angel. Don't say anything wrong. He might strike us. But you will find, I need to move on, but you will find over and over these great men and these great women in Scripture, they ask God the hard questions. Wow. They ask God the hard question. God, why this? God, what's going on? Where the heck were you? Some of you are like, can I do that? You probably should. You probably should have an honest conversation with God and let all that stuff off your chest and watch what he does in response to that. Because God loves to answer questions. <laughs> <laughs>